Namaste. Welcome to your practice. This is a slow flow practice for Warrior One. The sequence is nice to explore different variations of Warrior One and for you to find what is your best alignment today. So we'll begin lying down, but I want to make sure before we start that you've got a couple of blocks handy and you may or may not want a blanket to support under the knees. If you don't have blocks, that's okay. You can do the practice without, but they're going to be nice for a few of the things. Let's come to lie down and we'll take a few moments just to meditate there and then we'll add some movement. To begin, have your knees bent with the soles of the feet on the floor and slide your hands down until you find your front hip points, these little pokey bits of bone here, just at the outer edges of the pelvis. These are called our ASIS, but for today we'll just call them our front hip points. And we'll use them as a means to orient ourselves, just so we can sort of sense where our pelvis is in space as we move. And you will notice here that for the most part, your hips are pretty square right now. And when I say square, I just mean the hips are parallel to one another relative to a landmark. So right now, both of my hips are the same distance away from the floor, because I'm lying on my back. And they're also the same distance away from the front of the mat. So take a moment and just sort of sense that. And it's okay if you have some little variations. For some of us, one hip might feel a little higher than another. It's not a big deal. Don't go crazy on it. But just know where these are so that we can begin to explore that as we move through the practice. And then you can arrange your legs in a different shape if it feels good. Maybe taking the arms out to the sides if you like. For a few moments, beginning with a Shavasana. If there's any movement that would help you to settle in a little bit before we get started, you can do that. Or maybe it feels nice just to lie down. Now, as we rest here for a moment, it's an opportunity to be a little quiet with ourselves, but it's also an opportunity to check in. How's your body feeling today? How did you sleep last night? How does your digestive system feel? And what is your energy level like? Are there any aches or pains or injuries that you are having to navigate in your body right now? And is there anything else that your body would like you to take note of? How is your mood? How's your heart? How's your mind? What are you working with in your life right now? Another moment or two just to breathe and rest here. And now that you've got a little idea of what you are working with in your body right now, you can set an intention, maybe just asking yourself, what is it that I need? Your yoga practice is a means by which we can support ourselves in different ways. Creating and cultivating skills that help us to navigate our life challenges. It can also be a place for a little bit of an escape or an outlet for movement as needed. Ask yourself what you need. And then if you'd like to bring the hands to the heart, you're welcome to do that. Or lay one hand over another at the space of the heart and just breathe here for a moment. 
Remember that in addition to any work we do for ourselves, we can also make this practice an offering. We can ask that this practice help us to be of greater service. Maybe that it opens our hearts or our minds to others. Allows us to be more understanding or loving or generous in some way. Take one more breath where you are. And then if you had the hands apart, you could release them one leg at a time, perhaps step the knees in toward you again, the soles of the feet come to the floor. Bring the fingertips back to the front of the hips, to those ASIS. And as you do a few rounds of windshield wipers, just notice that the hips can move side to side and we change the plane that our hips are in. So as I tip my knees to the left, my hips go to the left. And I can feel how that shifts when I tip my hips to the right. I feel that those two bony protrusions, my hip points, move as well. I know it sounds simple and I know that you know that your hips and your legs go together. But there's something really valuable about feeling that and noticing that. And come back to center. And for our practice today, we're going to begin with a little bit of an awakening for the core. So I'd like to encourage you to drop your lower back heavily into the floor here. There's a little bit of a brace through the belly and then one leg at a time, lift the knees into the air, feet are off of the floor. Take your hands to the front of the thighs and then cross them so that your right hand is on your left thigh and the left hand is on your right thigh and then press thigh into hand, hand into thigh. Doesn't need to be a lot of pressure, but there's a little pressure. Now, keeping your left hand where it is. Extend your right arm up or back as your left leg reaches out to any degree, keeping the lower back pressing into the floor. Come back through center, press right hand into left thigh, left thigh into right hand. Now as you release with the left arm and the right leg, extending out only as far as you can, keeping that stability and strength intact the whole time opposite hand and thigh press into one another, coming back in, crossing the arm, and then releasing the other leg and arm to reach out and away from one another. As you continue here, alternating arms and legs, crossing the opposite arm on top every time, and you just notice what it feels like to be pressing arm, hand into thigh, thigh into hand, to notice the additional tension that arises when we stretch the arm and the leg away from one another. To be aware of any time that it feels like, oh, that's a little more than I need right now. Let's do one more time. Doesn't matter, you pick what you end on. Not a big deal if you did one extra on one side. And then lower, feet back to the floor. Bring the hands to the belly now and see if you can encourage the belly to soften or dilate under the fingers. Take a few breaths. Good. One more time. Drop the lower back into the floor. So we're coming into a what's called a posterior pelvic tilt when we do that. If you're scooping the tailbone under a little bit and this helps us to prioritize a little bit of engagement through the front abdominal muscles which we're using here keeping that you can bring the knees into the air again feet come away from the floor this time each hand rests on the same leg now as we do this if you find that it feels less stable for you you're just going to shorten the range of motion so you won't take your leg out as far your arm out as far or if you preferred the crossed arm version you can do that. For some of us, that might feel more stable. Begin by pressing hands into thighs, thighs into hands. Keep the right hand where it is as you extend the left arm and the left leg away from one another. And come back to center. Changing right arm, right leg. Continue to press with the left hand. Good. Keep going. So a little bit different. Each leg moving independently. Let's do a few more. 
Remember that everything we do should be pain-free. We never want to work through pain. That is contra, <laughs> doesn't make sense to do. Last time on the right. And then back to center, set the feet back down on the floor. And if there's any movement that would encourage you to allow your abdomen to relax after that work, something that would feel really good, please feel free to do that. And then we'll roll over to one side or another and come to a hands and knees position. Now, in your hands and knees position, we're going to do some work with blocks. If this doesn't work, if you don't have blocks, no big deal. Or if the block feels uncomfortable for you in any way, then you are going to just nix the block and instead you'll just lift the hand and the knee off the floor. If you can, if it's available to you and you have the equipment, put a block where your left hand will go and a block where your right knee will go. Then take your hands and, and knees as though you were just going to do a regular sort of hands and knees tabletop position. And in this shape, I just want you to notice that your shoulders are uneven and your pelvis is uneven. And that's okay, it's not a problem. If it feels problematic in any way, then it is a problem, of course, and you've just got something going on and you'll need to make an adjustment. But for the most part, it's okay to have our hips a little bit askew and our shoulders a little bit askew. We're made to, we're made to be able to move. Now, as you press down into your left hand and your right knee, lift your left knee and your right hand away from the floor and hover them on, as though they were on invisible blocks. You can take a look down and, and if you're able to see your knees, see if you can make them the same sort of distance away from the floor to try to level out the back of the pelvis. Keep your left elbow straight, locking out the elbow, and then let yourself hover a little bit here. I'm keeping my right toes down on the floor because that feels more stable. If I were to lift the toes, then things would get a little more wacky. So I'm gonna keep the toes down for now. Take another breath where you are, and then step down. Pause and breathe. And then we'll switch to the other side. Slide one block over, other block over, and come back to your hands and knees position. If you need to use your forearm instead, put it on the higher setting. Now, setting yourself up again, notice one side of the pelvis higher than another, that's fine. So if you were to check out where your ASIS are, that's not a problem. But you can notice when you do that, that one knee is lower than another, one knee is higher than another, and the knee that's lower, that, that front hip point is lower too, right? And that makes sense. Now, pressing down into your hand, pressing down into your knee, we lift up and find balance. So we're trying to work toward a place where we could imagine that there might be a block under our hand and our knee. And I like this one a lot because your whole body is trying to stabilize you as it figures out where are you in space. Now, you could look at the knees and figure it out that way, but could you sense where your hips are and ask yourself without looking, are both of my front hip points the same distance away from the floor? Not because that's right or wrong, but just because we wanna be able to know where our hips are. Go ahead, set that down. And we're going to do one more time each side. If this isn't working for you, as I said, you're just going to work with lifting, hovering one hand and one knee away from the floor, which will just be doing the same thing in the opposite sort of way. So your hips and, and shoulders will be a little uneven when you lift up. Here we're starting uneven and then leveling out. Now this time you're going to look a little bit more forward. Lock out your elbow, like you're spiraling your elbow pit forward here. And that just helps us to keep the shoulder excuse me, your um, arms straight. Notice without looking that one of your hips is higher than another. See if you can feel with your mind where those hip points are, and if you can't feel with your mind, take a hand and touch. Then, lifting up into our air table, 
Can you level out those two hip points without looking? And then check yourself. See how you did. Good. Two more breaths. Make sure the elbow stays straight. Mine keeps wanting to bend today. I'm a little tired. Good. Set it down. And we'll switch one more time. If you were doing this with me right now and you didn't know the class was about Warrior One, you'd think this class has nothing to do with Warrior One. I promise we're gonna get there. Last time, looking forward, left knee on the block, right hand on the block, feel with your mind's eye where your two hips are in space. Now, this is a skill. It really is a skill to know where you are in space and that's what we're practicing here. We're getting better at it. If you're having trouble telling, Use your hands or your eyes to confirm. And then, as you lift up, using your kinesthetic awareness, your proprioception, can you tell where your hips are in space? Is your right front hip point the same distance away from the floor as your left? Check it out. I am a little bit off. <laughs> so this is something that we're just playing with. Take another breath or two. And then set down. Let's move the blocks just off to the sides for now and come back to hands and knees. In our hands and knees position. Now, we may have some small um, differences. There's some big differences between our left side and our right side, but for the most part, our two hips are the same distance away from the floor. And that's pretty easy to sense. Like we've got that confirmation because we know that's the case when our knees and hands are in the same position here. Let's take a few rounds of cat and cow. The two sides of our spine, the two hips, the two shoulders, we're working asymmetrically during that last exercise. So sometimes it can feel nice to work them bilaterally. So if cat and cow, both sides of the body are doing more or less the same thing. And sometimes that'll feel a little satisfying after that kind of work. Do another round or two on your own, or if there's some other movement you're looking for, you can explore that. And then feel free to stay with the movement, or it might feel good to you to drop your hips back into child's pose, or maybe you'd like a downward facing dog, or there's some other movement that would feel right for you today. Take a moment or two and ask your body, what would you like? How can I help you so that you can better help me? Two or three breaths, if there's any stretching that your body's looking for, we can explore that. And then back to hands and knees. And from our hands and knees position, step your right foot forward to the front of the mat. With your back toes, if it's available to you, let's tuck under, that provides an extra little level of stability and support if it feels okay. And then just briefly, fingers to the front of the hips, your two ASIS, your two front hip points, where are they in space? Are they the same distance away from the front of the mat? If you were to pull your right hip back, that's gonna change. If you were to really step the right foot forward, that might change, but see so if you can keep it level for now just because. And then we'll add the arms, reach the arms overhead. Take three breaths here. If it feels okay, you might even explore just a little more reach with the arm, maybe a little arcing of the upper back. Keep lifting up through the front of the hips, through the front of the belly if you do that. One more breath here. And then hands come down. You can always use blocks to make this transition feel smoother. Slide the right knee back to the left and step your left foot forward to the front of the mat. On your way up, check the two front hips, same distance away from the front of the mat. Add the arms overhead. Now, with the arms overhead, this time if you wanna play, you could interlace the fingers and then steeple the thumb and first finger so you get this Charlie's Angels mudra. And then as you lift up through the arms, some people find or feel that they get a little extra level of support here. Maybe that helps you to feel like you can lift up a little bit more. 
two or three breaths right here. What we do with our arms and our hands can help us to feel more supported in other parts of our body as well. Good, let's land the hands back down to the floor or blocks and step back to our hands and knees position. Downward facing dog here. You might enjoy down dog with the hands on blocks or hands on the floor. And if down dog doesn't work in your body, then just stay with tabletop or take a few rounds of cat and cow. If you are in downward facing dog with me, let's explore just a little movement here. As you bend to your right knee, let the right front hip come forward and notice the pelvis has shifted. You take a look at the pelvis, if you're able to see it, you can see that it's turned to the left. As you straighten your right leg and bend into your left knee, notice that the pelvis has shifted to the right and that's okay. And then all the way back to center. Now from either hands and knees or downward facing dog, we'll step the right foot forward and come all the way up into a high lunge. For your high lunge, if you prefer to keep your hands on blocks and stay low, that's okay. If it's available to you to be lifted up a little bit higher, we can do that. Bring your hands to those front hip points again. We're gonna be doing a little bit more of that work. And take a look and sense that your two hips are the same distance away from the front of the mat. So we've squared the hips to the front of the mat. Now, your back heel, all of our bodies are different. And for some of us, this will be a little more challenging than others. But if it's possible in your body today, your back heel is a little bit lifted. Although you can't necessarily see your back foot, I want you to imagine or sense that your back toes are pointing straight forward. Then the back knee is also pointing straight forward. And what that means is that your back hip, it'll be your left hip here, is pointing straight forward. In this position, our pelvis is level. Our pelvis is equidistant. Two sides are equidistant from the front of the mat. Add the arms overhead again here. And this time we'll try something different. Let's hook the thumbs and spread the fingers wide. This brings the arms into yet another variation that you can explore. Take a few breaths here in your high lunge. And if it doesn't feel right to have the hands up, if you need the arms for balance in some way, no problem. Anjaniyasana, or this high crescent lunge, is like a variation on warrior one. And for a lot of folks, it feels better in the hips. It feels more comfortable in the hips, lower back and spine. Bring your hands back to the hips if they left. And then from here, lower your hands back down to the floor. If the floor feels far away, use blocks, and we'll step back to downward facing dog. Down dog isn't working for you, then stay with hands and knees or find something that feels good to you. Take a few breaths. And then please step your left foot forward and come up into your high lunge. Now, just as a quick note, when you're walking your way up, you might want to use your thigh for a little help or a wall or your blocks. Now, we didn't talk about the width of the pose, but I want to address that briefly here. The wider apart your feet are from left to right, the more stable it's going to be. So if you were trying to keep your left foot in one line with your right foot, that would be very challenging to balance. I like to have my left foot very clearly on the left half of my mat, my right foot very clearly on the right half of my mat, so that my pelvis has a nice strong base to rest on top of. Check in with those two hips. See that each of them is the same distance away from the front of the mat. And in line with that, the back heel, your right heel is pointing straight back. Your right toes are pointing straight forward. Your right knee is pointing straight forward or down, not off to the right. You may not have the range of motion in your foot or ankle in order to be exactly that, but you're somewhere in that neighborhood. As we stay here for another few breaths, 
This time, we'll clasp the hands behind us. And you can be a little relaxed and bent with the elbows. If it feels good to you to straighten the elbows, that's fine too. Again, we notice that how we hold the arms changes how we hold the rest of the pose. Take three breaths here. Good. Soften with the arms. Take the hands back to the front hips and step forward. Keeping the hands on the hips for just a moment, sense where each hip is in space, that it's the same distance away from the front of the mat. And then take a moment and let's just shake out the legs and shake out the arms. Get a little movement going in the body. There's no right or wrong way to do these poses. I'm showing you some really specific things today so that you can make choices. So we're just starting, not with rules, but with ideas, like here's something that we're doing here. See how it feels, notice the experience. In the same way, taking the hands to the hips. Now we're going to step one foot back behind us. Remember, I talked about keeping each foot in its own lane. Sometimes when we step back with one foot, the leg crosses a little bit into the other lane and then we wobble. So just take a look at what happens. Step your left foot straight back behind you now. And because I've done a lot of this, I'm able to step straight back, but some folks find that the leg sort of drifts over to the right. You'll often know this is happening because your front ankle and front foot are like trying to get your balance. To move, just move your right foot, right toes to the right, and then right heel to the right. Just inch over a little bit and see if that feels more stable. That's how that starts. Then if you're able to take a look at your back knee, see where it's pointing. Can you point it a little bit more forward? In crescent lunge, Sometimes we're able to use this shape to target a little more of a stretch through the front of the hip. So let's just take a quick look at that. I want you to imagine now that you're wearing suspenders and that you were lifting them up from the front. So each of these front hip points pulls up. As you do that, the back of the pelvis and the tailbone drop down and you may experience more of a stretch through the front of the left hip. If you know that you often experience tension or tightness here in the front of the hip, this is a nice way to get in there. And you can play with how much or how little you bend the knee for that. In all of these poses, I want your lower back to feel really good. If you do have a lot of experience of tightness in the front of the left hip, sometimes what we see is that the butt kind of sticks way out and the lower back has this big sway in it. So if that's happening for you, or you feel like your lower back is, is not comfortable or pinching here, put a little more bend in the back knee. That lets you get a little more laxity or, or mobility through the front of the left hip. Keeping that as you lift up through the low belly, the suspenders pull up, then the lower back has a little more space. Now we've been here for a little while, but I do wanna add arms overhead. And this time I'm gonna have you choose how you wanna have the arms. Fingers could be interlaced, thumbs could be hooked, or hands could just be reaching. One additional note is that for stability, my back hip is squeezing forward, so my left glutes are working here hard. It's automatic, I don't have to tell them to because they've learned to do that, but if you're wobbling a lot, sometimes this is something that we can explore. Let's bring the hands back to the front hips, step to the front of the mat, and take a moment to experience what it's like to be standing in mountain pose. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. When you feel ready, right foot steps back into that high lunge position. As you come into that high lunge position, check out where did my feet land? What adjustments do I need to make, if any? If your left foot is moving around a lot like this, then you may need to move it to the left. It's also possible to go too wide and that doesn't feel good either, so it's up to you to find the sweet spot. Can you sense where your back knee is pointing? Can you sense what's happening there? And see if you can keep your right thigh bone pointing straight forward 
the right toes pointing straight forward, the right heel points straight back or up. Then if you were to check in with the two front hip points, you'd notice, okay, they're facing straight forward. So that's pretty, that's pretty level. Take another breath or two here, and you can explore the tilt of the pelvis, maybe lifting up a little through the low belly, lifting your suspenders to put more stretch on the front of the right hip. And for those of you that are feeling a lot of compression in the lower back, to take some of that out of it. Then a choice with the arms, you can reach up, you can reach the arms out to the side. You could interlace the hands behind. Take a few breaths in your variation of Anjaneyasana. How much the front leg is bent is up to you. Let's have one more breath here. And stepping forward, release the arms, feel the two hips in space, and breathe. So not a lot of movement, but a lot of targeted sort of intensity here. Okay. Now, in the last few poses, we've really been working with having the two hips in the same plane. Let's change it up. Step your left foot back behind you and turn the hips to square off more with a long edge of the mat for a warrior two type shape. For before we bring the arms into it, you can take the hands to the front hip points. Sometimes we're told here to square the hips off to the side, but I know that when I do this shape, my back hip is going to be closer to the long edge of the mat than my front hip. So I don't need to try to square that off. It's square-ish, and that's where we are with that. Bring the arms out to the sides if you want and take a few breaths here. The reason why we're not trying to square the hips is because each of the hips is doing a different thing here. My right leg is supporting me um, in, in one shape. My back leg is supporting me in another shape. So it's going to have to shift the pelvis. If I were to try to square the pelvis completely, then I would have to really work differently with my two legs in order to support me here. So the most important thing is not measuring that the two hips are the same here, but just sensing like, okay, it's more or less parallel to the long edge of the mat, and I feel stable. We'll take one more breath, and then straighten your front leg, and we'll come forward into triangle pose just for a moment. Without looking, can you sense where your two hips are in space here? Can you sense where your ASIS are here, your front hip points? I'm gonna add a block under my front hand, so I've got something to push into. If it helps you to close your eyes and see if you can sense where your pelvis is, you do that. Often, we may have been told here to square off the hips, and I, I do not encourage you to try to do that here. Again, because each of the legs is doing such a different thing, the two sides of the pelvis need to be acting very differently here. So it needs to be asymmetrical. And what that means for many of us is if you were to measure the distance from each hip point to the edge of the mat, your back hip needs to be closer to the edge of the mat than your front hip. So it's almost as though that back hip is rolling a little bit forward. That's going to feel better and more natural for most of our spines, for most of our hips, most of our lower backs, than if we were to try to flatten our pelvis into, uh, into a shape. Bend into your front knee, and then step forward. Come to the front of the mat, and take a moment and see if you can sense how the two sides of your body have been doing two different things for the last little while. Notice that. What does that feel like? then feel that you're doing something now that's relatively symmetrical. Both of my feet pressing into the floor. Both arms are hanging. Both lungs are breathing. Let's step back with the right foot and find warrior two on the second side. Keep the hands on the hips for another moment. Notice where your hips are in space. Notice where each of your hip points is in space. 
and then add the arms. Again, we don't want or need to try to square the hips off with the side of the mat. When we're in our high lunge, because both of our hips are not rotating outwardly, it's a little bit easier to do that, but in this shape, it doesn't make sense to do it. So all you really need to know is, do my hips feel okay? Does my lower back feel okay? Do I feel supported and stable in my legs and in my pelvis? And that's a good place to be for your warrior two. Another breath here. And then as you straighten your front leg, reach forward with your front arm, you come into triangle pose. Pay a little attention to how you're feeling in your lower back and the pelvis. For folks that have some challenges or pain or instability in their lower back or SI joint, triangle is one that's sort of often insulting to the body. And one of the ways that we can make it feel more comfortable, more supported, is by not trying to manipulate the hips into a particular shape. So again here, my right front hip point is closer to the right side of the mat than my left. I'm letting it roll forward, almost as though I were turning to look down, my right hip turned down with me. For most of us, that's gonna feel much more natural and comfortable. Almost as though your right hip is starting to move back into a crescent lunge position. The way that it used to often be taught was to square the pelvis off as though you were trying to slip your body between two panes of glass. And the body is not shaped that way, so that does not work well. Not for most people. All right, let's bend into the front knee again. Looking forward, we'll step back to the front of the mat. And then in the moment, we'll put a few pieces together. In this shape, it's really easy to square the hips off because both the legs are doing the same thing. Now let's move into crescent lunge one more time. Hands start on the hips. Step your left foot straight back behind you to come back into your crescent lunge shape. Back hip is supporting you. Back knee pointing forward, back toes pointing forward. Chest is a little bit lifted. Now to make it warrior one, technically the only real difference is that the back heel is down. So as you start to drop your left heel toward the floor, notice that your left hip had to move back in space. Did you get that? So we start here in crescent lunge and as you move your left heel to the floor, your left hip moves back. That's natural, that makes sense. At this point, Please do not think that you need to try to square your hips again. You are not made out of Legos, so that won't work. The hips will not square here. Your right hip is going to be closer to the front of the mat than the left, and that's okay. Each of the hips is supported by its own leg. Now, if we take a look at the back foot, where are the toes pointing? This depends on your anatomy and what feels right to you. In my body, I like to have the toes pointing more forward, and I'm able to do that. What that does for me is it helps me to stretch my left calf, helps me to stretch into the front of the left hip more. That feels good to me. For some of us, we feel better if the toes are turned more out. That's fine. The toes are torn, turned more out. Notice that your left hip now has to rotate away from the front of the mat. So if you've got your hands on the hips the whole time, you can feel how that turns. If we add the arms overhead at this point, I wanna show you one more pose, not really a, a pose that's in the traditional canon of yoga poses, but this is one that one of my teachers, Jason Crandall, teaches. It's called warrior one and a half. So for warrior one, we would traditionally have the chest facing more forward. For warrior two, the chest faces the long edge of the mat. Warrior 1.5 has us somewhere in between. So if you want to try this with me, the arms can reach up. The chest is facing off to the left corner of the mat. And you can feel that this, for most of us, this is gonna feel pretty natural in the lower back. There's no real strain, no tweaking that's happening. What sometimes happens is if a student is told or if a teacher says, now in your warrior one, square your hips to the front of the mat, 
Because your hips cannot do that in this position, some other body part is going to try to compensate. The back of the pelvis, the SI joint, your SI joints, your lower back, or something else. Your knee sometimes in the back can get a little tweaked. So think of it as warrior one and a half to start. And then as you begin to turn, it's the belly and the chest that turn a little bit more back toward the front of the mat. But the hips can quite, can be quite stable and comfortable right where they are. Now, if you add the arms overhead, how does that feel? Or do you want to take the arms into a different shape today? So now we've got a few different things for you to play with here. See what warrior one feels good for you. And when you've arrived at that warrior one, we'll just take two breaths. Before we step forward, bring your hands back to the front hip points and feel where they are. Then lift your back heel Spin your back hip forward until you come back into crescent lunge and feel the difference. Feel where the two hips land up. Step forward to the front of the mat. Maybe we're in that for a long time. So if you needed to take a break, that was pretty good for you. I'm glad you did. But what I mean to say is you may notice a big difference right now between the left side of your body and the right side of your body. See what you notice. And if it feels good to move around a little, you can do that. All right, let's explore the right side. Right foot steps back. We're going to do high lunge first. Right knee forward. Right heel back. Both hips parallel to the front of the mat. Now, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of guidance this time. I'm just gonna ask you to start to drop your right heel into warrior one. If you wanna make it warrior one and a half, Turning your chest to the right front corner, you can do that. You can explore your toes angled more out or more forward. And there's no reason why you need to have your heel all the way on the floor other than um, an arbitrary decision. So if you find that it feels better to you to keep the back heel lifted in any degree or even to do crescent lunge instead of warrior one, then that's a great decision for you. I have several students for whom warrior one just doesn't feel great. This is a really complex pose. The two legs are doing such different things and we're asking such a lot of the hips and spine here based on what our normal lifestyles are like. That for some of us, simplifying initially, and then making a decision about what's going to support you and your body's health and your mental health, that's the pose that you need. Choose where you'd like to explore your hands. And then the last thing that I'm gonna say here, I know there's been a lot of talking. The last thing I wanna to say to you here is that if you do have your back heel all the way on the floor, for many of us, that's going to automatically tilt our pelvis forward. Then when we try to bring our chest up, it's all about the lower back doing all of that for you. So if you're feeling like, oh my gosh, my lower back is getting really tired or I'm uncomfortable here, lift the back heel, make it a little more like a crescent lunge. Then we've got some play in the back knee so that right thigh isn't pulling us into that pelvic tilt and making your lower back ache. You can also just rest. <laughs> All right, let's step forward, back to the front of the mat, and one more time, pause and breathe. I wanna say one more time to you that there is no right way to do warrior one. There might be a right way for you and your body today. That's what we're looking for, and that's what we're looking for every time we step on the mat but you don't need to follow some specific rule. We're just trying different things today so that you can find what works for you. Okay, right here from the front of the mat, let's take a moment, reach the arms overhead, and fold forward. 
in your forward fold, step your feet just a comfortable distance apart, and then see how it feels. You might want to clasp opposite elbows and hang for a moment, where the arms could dangle toward the floor. Bend one knee and then another. Let your spine traction downward. We've got one more little series of warrior one to do. We're almost done. It'll be brief. From here, hands to the hips, hinge your way up. And for a final time today, step your right foot back and come into warrior one. Your warrior one, that might be crescent lunge, it might be something else. Ask yourself how it feels. Where are your hips? How is your back? How is your back knee? How's your back ankle? You may find you need to walk your right foot to the right, give your pelvis a little more space. Oftentimes, if we try to do a little tightrope action here, it's not gonna feel great. So a wider stance will be beneficial. Good. Now from your warrior one, open the arms and turn the hips into warrior two. Do your feet feel like they're in the right place? For most of us, we need to change where the feet are. A lot of times we'll want to take the feet wider and you'll want to line the feet up more so that your front heel is more in line with either the back heel or the arch of the back foot. This is going to put the hips more in a uh, parallel position to the long edge of the mat. But again, remember, they're not lined up completely. It's also okay, check it out, if you walk your right foot more to the right, it's okay if your hips don't line up with the long edge of the mat because this isn't about like us all lining up perfectly. It's not kindergarten, even if it were, self-expression is important. So you don't need to be like lined up at perfect angles. That's why I don't like the mats that have things measured out on them. We can be a little more freeform than that. All right, from warrior two, back to warrior one. Now, when I make this transition, I will shorten my stance by stepping my back foot forward, turning my back toes more forward, and walking my right foot to the right. That's what I need in order to make that transition. As you make your transition, see what feels good to you, and then step to the front of the mat. One breath in and out. Right foot back to warrior one. Your warrior one that feels right for you. Open to warrior two and change your feet as needed. There are some body types that won't need to change their feet. That's fine. Many people I see change their feet to feel more stable. So you get to decide. Now from warrior two, back to warrior one. You can be tired of the arms overhead, just bring my hands to the heart. One of my best friends loves to practice this way and it feels very peaceful and grounded to me too when I do this. Now we'll step back to the front of the mat, both feet on the floor, arms by the sides, breathe. Remember your intention. Remember what mattered to you. Arms reach overhead. Soften your knees as you fold forward. Bring the hands down to the floor or onto blocks. And then let's step back to hands and knees. Either child's pose, down dog, or a few rounds of cat and cow. See what your body's looking for. Again, down dog, child's pose, cat and cow, or any other movement at all. And then, let's all meet back in our hands and knees position. Make sure you have enough room, and we'll thread the needle. Take your right arm up toward the sky. Stretch your right arm under your left, your right shoulder blade 
outer shoulder and face to the mat. You may need to add a block or a blanket to support you under the head or under the shoulder. And with the left arm, you can decide if you want to reach forward or if you'd like to use your left hand to help as a little leverage to stretch and twist a little bit through the back. Take a few breaths here. Press into your left hand, rise back up, right hand back to the floor. Left arm stretches and left arm under. When your shoulder comes to the mat and your face, take a moment and see if it feels okay. See if there's any adjustments that need to be made. Make a choice about where you'd like your right arm to be. And then just a breath or two here. I notice here that my left hip is lower than my right. That's fine. There's nothing magical about having the hips square. It's just that it's a nice place to start from, to notice this is what that feels like. And then when we start to move our legs and hips around, we notice where the hips go and what that feels like. Press yourself back up and please come to a seat. We'll take the two legs in front of us. You may want a blanket to support under the hips. Then we'll keep the right leg long. Bend your left knee so the left foot comes to the right inner thigh. Again, there's nothing magical or inherently correct or right about the hips being the same distance away from the front of the mat. But just right now, I want you to check and see that they are. So my left hip and my right hip, if I were to measure, would be the same distance away from the front of the mat. Now begin to lean forward a little bit and see what that feels like in your back. So that is one way to do this pose. If you wanted to try something else, take your left hip, pull it back in space, then turn your chest back toward the front of the mat. Now your two hip points are very different. So my left hip is much further away from the front of the mat than my right. And as I start to walk forward, this uneven stretch is going to feel good for some of us. You can see where you want to be. Choose something that feels right for you. If you pull the hip way back, then reach. Now I'm getting a big stretch through the whole side of my body. And sometimes that's exactly what we need. So there's not one magical setup that's perfect. Because your body does so many different things. Just take a breath or two here in whatever forward fold you've settled into. If you're tired of thinking about it, that's fine. Just arrange yourself and breathe. Hmm. Okay. Come all the way back up. And we'll change legs. You can explore what does it feel like to lean forward with my hips level with one hip further back. See what you like. See what feels good today. Last few breaths. Come all the way back up. Take your right leg back in front of you again. I think there is something really satisfying about ending with a symmetrical pose. So if we do one thing on the left and one thing on the right, I like to do something that's bilateral, both sides at once before we rest. It may be completely in my head, but things that are completely in my head are still real. <laughs> so. I'm going to do this. You can join me if you like. 
Breathe in and out a few times. And then when you are ready, take your time and let's make our way back onto our backs for Shavasana. If you want to close in a different position, legs up the wall, seated meditation, reclined over in your blanket or bolster, whatever is right for you, then please do that. You do come to lie down if you find that you'd like a little extra support or weight over the pelvis. Sometimes this can feel really settling and grounding. And the arms can come out to the sides. I want you to make yourself as comfortable as you can. I want this to be a place where you feel like you can take care of yourself in whatever way you need to. And then one more time, check in and see how you're feeling. How's your body right now? How's your breathing? How's your heart and your mind? Can you feel that the mat is beneath you? Can you feel the earth? Can you feel gravity? And can you notice that you're breathing? If you can notice one or either or all of these things, how the body feels, how the body breathes, how the body is supported. then we're practicing grounding ourselves. And feeling grounded isn't necessarily the same as feeling good. You may still feel like I've got a lot going on in my life, or the world is super crazy, or um, you know, I still have the pain in my knee from last week. We can't yoga everything away. We can't breathe everything away. We're still going to have circumstances in our lives. But what we can cultivate, what we're working with here, is a connection. And the connection is to our own embodied experience. See how present you can feel, how alive and aware in this moment. How grounded can you be? And this puts us in touch with our sense of personal power, Our sense of agency, our ability to care for ourselves in the best ways we can. We always have these things. Rest here for another moment or two. If you have a little more time to stay longer, please do. Otherwise, now it's time to begin to wake up. Stretch or move in a way that feels good to you. And then we can meet again in a seat if you like. This practice has been about warrior one, but it's also about your ability to choose. It's about your understanding of where your body is in space, how we can cultivate that skill and use that to facilitate greater control, greater ease, 
more confidence in ourselves in making the right choices for us, knowing that that changes moment by moment. Take a moment here and acknowledge the good work that your body and your mind did for you today. And if you'd like to bow the chin to the chest, you can do that. Perhaps just one more moment to acknowledge the power and the potency of these practices come to us from ancient India, how wonderful it is that we're able to practice in this way. Let's take one more breath together here. And then it's time to move on with our day. Thank you so much for practicing. Thanks for taking care of yourselves. And I hope to see you again soon. Please be well.